You have to be joking. I'm seriously not impressed, sir. Sir Isaac, thank you for joining us today. Your contributions to science are legendary, but I understand some of your experimental methods were rather unusual by today's standards. Science demands dedication, though I suppose inserting a bodkin between my eye and the bone until I saw white circles wasn't what you'd call conventional. But how else was one to understand the nature of light and vision? You could have perhaps not done that. Nonsense. Besides, that was hardly my most dangerous experiment. I found that mercury has quite a distinctive taste. You tasted mercury? Among other things, how else would one catalogue the properties of substances? Though I must say, some of the alchemical compounds were rather less pleasant than others. Let's move on to your mathematical work. There's been some controversy about the development of calculus. Ah, yes. Leibniz claims he developed it independently. How convenient that his independent discovery came after I'd shared my work with him. Though I suppose great minds think alike, it's just that some minds think a bit slower than others and need to read someone else's papers first. That's quite an accusation. Is it an accusation to state facts? I developed fluxions years before Leibniz supposedly had his revelation. Though I will admit his notation was better than mine. Not that I would ever say that to his face. Your rivalry became quite heated, as I understand it. Heated? Not at all. I simply arranged for an impartial committee of my closest friends at the Royal Society to investigate the matter thoroughly and reach the completely unbiased conclusion that I was right and Leibniz was wrong. Pure coincidence that I wrote the report myself. Your contributions to physics are undeniable. The laws of motion, universal gravitation. Yes, though apparently some find them easier to understand than others. Leibniz criticised my concept of gravity as occult. I would have explained it more clearly to him, but I was too busy actually doing science rather than writing letters about doing science. The Principia Mathematica revolutionised our understanding of the physical world. What drove you to write it? Halley wouldn't stop bothering me about planetary motion. I told him I'd lost my calculations, hoping he'd leave me alone. Instead, he insisted I reproduce them. Eighteen months later, I handed him three volumes of my Principia. That should teach him to be more specific with his requests. It became one of the most important scientific works ever published. If you say so, I was mostly trying to prove Hook wrong. Looking back on your life's work, what would you say to young scholars today? Question everything. Taste nothing without good reason. And if you must stick a bodkin in your eye, keep detailed notes. You might not get a second chance at that particular experiment. Oh, and if anyone claims they discovered something after reading your papers, publish immediately. And your famous quote about standing on the shoulders of giants? Ah, yes. And how very true it is. Though in Leibniz's case, I suspect he was standing on tiptoe trying to peek at my notes. Thank you for your time, Sir Isaac. One last thing. You know, people do get terribly excited about falling apples, though I must say they're far more pleasant to eat than mercury. As it happens in celebration of your work, we've commissioned a trophy for you in the form of a giant apple. You have to be joking. I'm seriously not impressed, sir. If you enjoyed this interview, please like and subscribe.